The next stop on our Fitzroyan pub call is the Wheat Sheaf, which took over from the Fitzroy Tavern as the artist hangout in the 1940s. It was the haunt of writer Julian McLaren Ross. Commercial success eluded him in his lifetime, but his legacy has endured, and he's now regarded as the epitome of the spirit of the free-drinking Fitzrovian artist, as society was formed in his honour. Julian McLaren Ross is the president in death of the Sardinian society. Like he's the reason the society exists. Primarily it's meetings in this room, uh, usually with writers or people who, who've written a book about something or a personality or an event that connects with Soho. The Wheat Sheaf has a distinguished list of regulars that rivals the Fitzroy Tavern. We had this extraordinary menagerie of weird and wonderful people. Then. You would have almost invariably come across Graham Greene, Dylan Thomas, Nina Hamlet, Peter Van Sittart, Alistair Crowley. The Wheat Sheaf is his favourite tavern and he used to sell his own semen as an elixir of life. As you do when you're up against it, yeah. But he freaked out Dylan Thomas. He, he saw Dylan Thomas staring at him and then did a drawing uh, and went over to Dylan Thomas and it was what Dylan Thomas had been thinking about. Was Dylan Thomas was completely freaked by, by this and uh, you know stayed away from Soho at least for a few days because he was terrified that Prince of Darkness was had his number and knew what he was thinking. You know, they're all these kind of mad stories. They've all got a history if you look into it long enough. The beauty of Fitzroyville is that it's like a patchwork quilt. Anywhere you look, something's happened or there's been someone famous living there or something. Something magic's happened. Here is the spot of the Berners Street hoax. In 1810, Theodore Hook bet his friend he could make any address in London famous. And so the next day, poor Mrs Tottenham had to answer her door to the dozens of suppliers that the waggish Theodore Hook had contacted. But an altogether more lucrative caper was planned here. In 1963, Bruce Reynolds and co. put the finishing touches to the plan of the great train robbery. Where the cinema stands used to be the home of a more psychedelic form of escapist entertainment. The UFO Club. Pink Floyd, the band in residence. If you're ever around these streets of midnight, be sure to walk down what Julia McLaren Ross called Jekyll and Hyde Alley. Corporate culture has done more damage to our cultural heritage than the Luftwaffe ever did. It seems as though every day something disappears. We mustn't let this happen to Fitzrovia. They're going to try and straighten the bent road. I'm not sure that you can straighten the bent road. I think the road is bent. As a, a wonderful poet uh, once writing about the English countryside, uh, the very, very short couple of lines, wildness and wet, wildness and wet. Oh, let there be yet some wildness and wet. And um, that's what I want from Fitzrovia. I want some wildness and wetland. I don't want the bent road straight.